presentation three looks at the second element of the marketing mix, which is price. In this presentation, we're going to look at or be familiar with the factors influencing the choice of pricing strategy that an organisation uses and allow us to describe different pricing strategies. So what is price? Price is how much is charged for the actual product or service that you buy. The price must not be too high compared to a competitor's price and it must reflect the quality of the product. The price charged should also enable a business to cover its costs and make a profit. The main reason why private sector organisations are in business is to make a profit. So you have to sell a product at a higher price than you buy it in for or manufacture it at. So pricing strategies can be short or long term and we're going to look at them just in a few minutes. So what factors then determine price? What customers are willing to, say, to pay? They say that everything sells at a price, so what is the customer prepared to pay for a product? What do they think it's worth? Another factor is the supply of and demand for the product. Um, if products are in short supply, for example, during a bad harvest, there aren't enough potatoes, then what you'll find is the price of potatoes will go up. So the because there isn't the same supply of them. The same with demand. If you think of concert tickets and uh, there is a limited supply of concert tickets and a huge demand for them, then because companies could sell these products over and over again, they can put the price up too. The quality of the product. If good quality raw materials are put into making the product, then they're going to cost more to make. So an organisation can increase the price uh, based on that. How much profit the firm wants to make? Businesses might have an idea of a percentage profit, a markup that they want to, to, to achieve. Therefore, that's going to determine very much the percentage that they'll add on to the cost price to uh, give the business a profit. Competitors prices. That was mentioned in the last slide. It's really important that if you want to be competitive, you want to keep up with your rivals, you charge something called a competitive price, a price that's similar to theirs. Your target market. If you're appealing to an upper class market, a market with a high income, then you could perhaps charge a higher price than if your product was targeted towards a lower income market where people don't have the same amount of money to buy the product. Similar again about the average income of the market that kind of goes in tow with the last one. The position of the product in the life cycle. Now, back in the last presentation, we talked about the product life cycle and we talked about the different stages, introduction, growth, maturity and decline. So clearly when a product's coming into the market at first, you maybe want to make it appealing. So you'll find that the price is quite low. As the product starts to grow, that's when you can maybe increase the, the price of the product because people are more inclined to buy it. At maturity, you wouldn't want to increase your product anymore. And towards the end of maturity and into decline, then you would maybe want to reduce the price of your product to try and get the product sold. Pricing strategies, as we said a couple of slides ago, are either long term or short term. Now, long term pricing strategies mean that these will stick with, these will be pricing strategies that you would use on a long term basis. These are your kind of normal pricing strategies. However, from time to time, businesses may feel the need to introduce a different pricing strategy for a shorter period of time, and we call these short term pricing strategies. So your longer term ones are your low price. This is where you will charge a consistently low price for your product to attract sales from competitors. For example, if you look at Primark, uh, where they tend to charge a consistently low price because that's the kind of product, these are the kind of customers that people, um, uh, companies would expect to buy with them, people who expect low prices. So Primark has a consistently or long term low pricing strategy. The market price or, or, or competitive pricing strategy is where you set your prices similar to those of your competitors. And a really good example of that is, for example, petrol. You tend to find the differences in petrol between petrol suppliers is not that different. These tend to be what is called a market price or a competitive price. And finally, we've got our high or premium price. And that's when you are appealing to certain customers, giving the products a feeling of exclusiv exclusivity. For example, buying a Ferrari. People who are going to buy a Bentley or a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or an expensive bag or piece of jewellery will expect to pay a higher price because you're normally paying for a designer or a brand name. 
So these are our three long-term pricing strategies. If we move on to the short term ones now, these are the pricing strategies that are brought in for a short period of time for a particular reason. And then the business will once again resort to their longer term pricing strategy. The first one we've got here is market skimming and market skimming is used to price new products coming onto the market with little or no competition. So, for example, if you have introduced a new when, when flat screen TVs were introduced at first or 3D TVs, then the first company who brought them in could could market skim, could skim the surface of the market to get those people who were prepared to pay a higher price for the product. As competitors come into the market, that's when your product starts to find its competitive or market price again. So you tend to find the prices introduced initially high to get those people who are prepared to pay a higher price to be one of the first to have that product. And then when competitors come in, you'll tend to find the price will resort back to its competitive or market price. Penetration pricing is the second strategy here. And that's if you're a new organisation trying to get into an established market. What you may have to do is reduce your prices to below those of competitors, not ridiculously low, just below those of competitors to try and get customers to buy your products to become keen on them and want to continue buying them. And then you can very gradually nudge your price back up to the competitive price again. Destroyer pricing is actually illegal in the UK. And we spoke about this when we were talking about competition policy under our external factors back in um, unit one. And destroyer pricing is where an organisation enters a market and sells their price at a ridiculously low price, normally at a loss, in order to enable the business to defeat the smaller competition. So what would happen as a result of this is that smaller competition would be destroyed, thus the reason for the, the name of the strategy. Now, the UK government do not look upon this kindly, and as a result of that, they have banned it because what they're doing is they're trying to curb competition. Competition policy is all about stimulating and keeping competition for the consumer. And if businesses can come in and drop their price so low that they destroy the smaller competition, then they are actually curbing, stopping competition from happening. So as I say, destroyer competition, uh, destroyer pricing is a, a, a strategy, but it's actually alienated in this country. The next one is promotional pricing. And that's where for a period of time, you'll drop the price of your products. For, for example, a summer sale, you might have 20% off or a winter sale. Or, and what they normally do here is they normally have these uh, promotional prices to get rid of old stock. Maybe you're moving into the winter, so you want to get rid of your summer stock. So you might reduce the items by 20 percent or whatever. And we call that promotional pricing. The next one is a loss leader. And a loss leader is where you will have items in your store that are priced at such a low price that they are once again, uh, uh, get, um, obtaining a loss, they're not actually making you any profit and you're trying to entice customers into the shop. You're not making a profit in these products, um, but what you do is you hope that when people come into the shop to buy your loss leaders, they'll buy other things when they're there. Supermarkets are very good at doing this and they'll normally have them at the end of the aisles and they will perhaps have something like Coca-Cola or Tetley tea bags or whatever at an extremely low price. And what they're trying to do there is entice customers to buy other things when they're in the store, thus getting the, the, the customers through the door. Uh, discriminatory pricing is where you will charge different prices for the same product to different people or at different times. Good examples of this, if you look at things like EasyJet, Ryanair, when at certain times of the year they can charge, or certain times of the day even, they can charge different prices for the same flight going from Glasgow to London. It could be the very same seat, it's the very same journey, but you're maybe travelling at a different time. ScotRail do it um, during peak hour. They'll charge customers or travellers a higher price bet among, uh, between the peak hours. And at other times of the day, the off-peak hours, they'll charge lower prices. Companies also do it for holidays as well. Uh, you're, you're maybe picking a holiday over the school holidays and you'll pay way more for it than you would if schools were back. And we call this discriminatory pricing. Psychological pricing is another one where it gives the, the, the consumer or the customer the idea that the product is actually cheaper than it is. This works for some people and not others. The example I've got here is 19.99 rather than 20 pounds. So because it's moved up onto another digit, a two instead of a one, 
customers might think they're actually getting a really do good deal when, to be honest with you, the difference is only really one pence. Um, this next slide is actually a really good um, link uh, to BBC Bite Size, and it's about how the mini was priced, and the mini was priced far, far too cheaply when it came into the market in comparison to other small cars at the time. Um, so it makes a really, really interesting uh, watch. And the, the next slide here is a video link on psychological pricing, and it goes into why customers believe that when you price something at 19.99 instead of 20, they actually think that they're getting a good deal for it. And once again, that's worth a good watch. Now, as I mentioned in the last uh, presentation and product, at the end of every uh, presentation here, we're going to talk about how changing one element of the marketing mix is going to affect others. And what we'll be doing in class with this is we're actually going to be working through all of the elements once we've done the four main P's, and we're going to see how if a business changes in this instance price, how is it going to impact on product, promotion and place? And as I say, we'll do this at the end of each of them. Uh, thank you.